So this is probably going to be another, like, low-quality video, because that's what's coming out of quick capture lately. So I apologize for um, the, the quality of this picture. Um, but I did want to address your two questions. As a former Christian, and now um, I've been a, a pagan and a Wiccan for the last ten years, I wanted to um, address your question, and I will be respectful. Um, and I would hope that if you address me, that you give me the same level of respect that you've asked for. Um, your first question, do I think that Jesus existed? Um, I'm not sure. I... You said Jesus of the Bible, so I will say no, not Jesus of the Bible. Because I think that the things that were written about about, uh, about Jesus in the Bible, many of them were taken from previous myths in order to fit the prophecies that you talk about in your next question. Um, do I think that a man named um, Joshua, who they called the king of the Jews, existed? Um, quite possibly, yes. Um, but he was the king of the Jews because he had royal lineage and the reason why people um, were so excited about him is because the Jews were being ruled by the Romans and wanted to get out of Roman rule. They saw Jesus, the son of two people of royal lineage, as the king of the Jews and therefore a liberator from their political strife. Um, the, the miracles, um, you know, there's lots of tall tales out there. And especially when it comes to important figures, back then there were many people who there were, you know, fantastical stories about, you know. Um, I, I chalk that up to being a lot like Pecos Bill or Paul Bunyan. Um, you know, um, as stories spread across the land, the, the story gets more and more exaggerated and things like that. And, um, you know, a story about him making wine turns into, you know, he turned water into wine. A story about him you know, um, walking on um, a salt sea, which if you've ever been, okay, if you've ever been to the Great Salt Lake, you know that when it gets cold, it freezes and there's still a level of water above it, so it looks like you're walking on water. Um, as far as I know, I think the Dead Sea and the Red Sea have lots of salt content and therefore it's capable of doing the same thing, so I can only assume that's probably one feasible explanation for that. Um, yeah. Other than that, I see a lot of similarities between Jesus and previous God figures. So um, I think that a lot of the stories that, that people attribute to Jesus may not have been about him to begin with. Um, I think that the Bible was constructed by men at the Council of Nicaea. And that they took a lot of things that they thought fit and then they threw out a lot of other things that they didn't like. So, I mean, they had an editing process there. So we don't hear about the things that you know, didn't fit prophecy. It's the law of averages, you know. Um, and they kind of have a figure that they kind of made to fit certain things. So, um, yeah, there, there's plenty of reasons why I don't believe. Um, but, you know, I respect anybody who has a, a log logical reason for believing what they believe. So, you know, the fact that you're asking these questions respectfully is really nice. Um, and, you know, I have many reasons to not believe, you know, um, I, there's, um, besides the fact that, you know, I see a lot of, um, contradictions in the Bible and things like that, I just don't believe that there is a moral absolute code that's good for everything. Um, I just did a video on a spiritual relativism, um, and the other side of that is spiritual absolutism. I don't think that, um, a book of words can explain everything for all time. There's, the, you know, we're talking about um, an unlimited chaotic system that you know that we can't even our minds can't even really conceive how big the universe is. So to, to say that a book with 60, you know, 66 books explains everything, no, no, it's much more vast than that. And, you know, having ten little lines that are moral code, and that explains everything, is absolutely ridiculous, too. It says, thou shall not lie, or thou shall not bear false witness, actually. So, um, if a murderer comes to your door, knocks on your door, and he's looking for a friend of yours that's staying with you, you know this person's going to murder that person. They say, ah, is Jennifer there? Are you going to say, sure, she's in the backyard, you know? <laughs> are you going to say that? No. 
of course, you're going to lie and protect your friend, but according to the, the, the commandments, that's a sin, and you can go to hell for that. So, you know, if you're not repentant for your sin. So if you don't feel bad for lying to a serial killer, you'll go to hell. Sorry. And I don't think that, you know, being what I know about belief and faith, because I, I took a, a, a class last semester in um, religious philosophy, and I'd like to actually cover a full uh, video on this, because I think it's an interesting topic. But um, there is a philosopher called Louis J. Poyman, P-O-J-M-A-N. Poyman writes books on religious philosophy, and he has some very pointed views about the differences between belief and faith. Belief is non-volitional. So in other words, you don't have a choice in what you believe. You believe on things based on evidence presented to you. If you only have a certain amount of evidence presented to you, then you'll believe what you know, what you've been told based on the evidence. You know, um, that's why we have so many different faith systems within the same construct. You know, um, same same world, lots of different faith systems because people see things differently based on the philosophies that they've been exposed to. Um, faith, you know, when we get down to like the root word, you know, let's talk, you know, the root word of faith is loyalty. It's, you know, um, it's actually, you know, like a, um, a volitional act to be loyal to one's religion or deity. So having faith is completely different than believing in something. Um, Jesus Christ didn't say, have faith in me. He said, believe in me. And so he's basically trying to, to you know, the, the whole idea is illogical in the idea that um, you can't choose what you believe because belief is non-volitional. Therefore, you know, the whole system is set up to destroy itself in that way. Anyway, um, I'm rambling now, but I did want to answer your questions. Um, uh, I'm sure you'll probably get quite a few different pagan perspectives. I'm a Wiccan. I teach Wicca here in Chicago. Um, I consider myself to be um, one of YouTube's more knowledgeable Wiccans. Um, so, you know, if you have any questions about my beliefs, feel free to ask.